I've heard a lot of hatred things said. But as one of our great American poets have said, haters are going to hate. You just got to shake it off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Home. Well, it's an honor to be here uh, this evening with each and every one of you. My name is Matthew Tarpley. I'm an elected board member of the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. It is the largest Protestant denomination here in our state. I'm also an alumnus of Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary right up the road, and I pastor a Baptist church not far from here. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I got one child walking and one still in the womb, but despite all of that, I just feel led to kind of speak this evening as just sort of a humble southern preacher boy, you know, and I want to beg your patience from the outset here because I've been told by others that I'm not always the most civilized of preachers. Y'all, I'm aware that many Christians have already spoken to you from almost every possible perspective imaginable pleading with you to do the right thing and cancel this upcoming Pride Festival. I'm aware that there's probably not much that I could say to you tonight that would change your minds, but I still felt led to throw my voice into this conversation. Yes, you probably can't say that the United States is a Christian nation anymore, and I'm aware that even here in what's traditionally been called the Bible Belt, our Biblical compass has kind of lost its ability to find true north. Might be able, not be able to throw a bunch of Christian doctrine at you tonight. I might be, not be able to speak to you about the biological insanity of LGBTQ lifestyles or even the sociological effects and the negative impact thereof that they're sure to have on children. They've already all been brought to your attention, and it seems to have not done anything. But... You know, there are a few doctrines that have been preached to me since I was in high school by the LGBT movement, and maybe you will listen to those. And those are the doctrines of tolerance and inclusion. Recently, I was telling an individual about the negative impacts that pride parades and pride festivals have on societies, and they said, sir, hold up, my God is tolerant and inclusive. And I, just, I couldn't help but think, Really? Is your God tolerant and is your God inclusive? I mean, let me give kind of a crude illustration for one moment here. I mean, let's, let's just consider that there was a particular group that wanted to hold a particular festival for Holocaust denial, something insane like that. Despite claims of being free speech absolutists, I think many of you would obviously, rightly, and immediately say, no, this is offensive, this is divisive, right? This is intolerant of the 0.4% Jewish population in North Carolina. Let's say another group wanted to hold a, a public art display for drawings of the prophet Muhammad, right? Something that's blasphemous to the religion of Islam. Again, I think many of you would rightly and obviously try to push to do the right thing because that's intolerant, that's divisive and offensive to North Carolina's 1.3% Muslim community. And yet, there is an event on the calendar moving forward with full speed ahead that completely stomps on biblical ethics regarding sexuality, marriage, gender roles, the family unit, and some of the dearest convictions that Christians in the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina hold dear to themselves. You have absolutely no shame or hesitancy to offend, exclude, mock, and disgrace the largest religious constituency in this state. And that's what you're doing, and Christians make up 77% of North Carolinians. Now, y'all, I'm aware that there are a number of professing Christians who celebrate this and intend to take part in this festival. We've maybe heard of a few of them already, but that does not change the fact that the majority of Christians from Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox backgrounds alike, they still believe this book 
right here that you just had a gentleman put his hand on when he swore an oath. And we still believe Moses in Genesis chapter 2. We still believe the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 19 and the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 when all of them quote the same passage that marriage is between one man and one woman for life. We still believe this book in Romans chapter 1 whenever it says that LGBTQ lifestyles are vile, shameful, against nature, and that they are the evidence of the judgment of God against a people. We still believe this book in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 whenever it says those who practice unrepentant LGBT lifestyles will not inherit the kingdom of God. And we still believe this book whenever it says that Jesus Christ died for sinners like us and rose again and offers the freedom of new life to all those who repent and believe. We still believe this book and by having a pride festival, you're stomping on this book and you're spitting in the faces of your largest religious constituency in the state. Y'all, how is it that it's allowed to go on? Well, I think that North Carolina's most famous Baptist pastor, often called America's pastor, I think he has the answer for us, and his name was Billy Graham. In the last letter Billy Graham wrote before he died, he said, our society strives to avoid any possibility of offending anyone but God. But God. And I think that that's what's going on here. You don't care about tolerance if you tolerate every action and worldview except those of your Christian neighbors. You don't care about inclusion if you include every worldview and action except those of your Christian neighbors. You might wave high the banners that say love, tolerance, inclusion, but what those banners are actually saying is we hate biblical and historical Christianity. That's what those banners are actually saying, and that's what the majority Christians in this state are taking it as, and it's pure hypocrisy, y'all. And I see that I probably said a lot of things that many of you disagree with. I see some of you rolling your eyes at me right now. So let me just go ahead and say a couple more things that I'm sure will offend maybe some of you even more. But it's because I love you, and I love this state. But I'm going to tell it to you straight. Sodomy is degenerate. It is shameful and it is sinful behavior. And the writing on the walls is there for any society that tolerates or accepts that kind of behavior, y'all. And Wake Forest is no exception at all. I'm not talking about hating anyone. I'm not talking about hurting anyone or anything like that. We don't hate anyone. We want everyone to find the life-changing grace, the soul-saving, sin-conquering grace that is available at the cross of Jesus Christ. And that's what love looks like, y'all. Love looks like the cross of Jesus Christ, where he died, he bled, and he suffered for people like us. So in light of the seriousness of that, I believe all of you need to recognize the seriousness of what you're allowing and the consequences that await you. I take no pleasure at all in saying that if you consent to allowing this pride festival to take place, you will spend an eternity in hell. Easy. Damnation awaits you if you open the floodgates to this festival. It awaits you, y'all. And I want to tell you that another opportunity is open to you tonight as well. Another opportunity is available to you tonight as well, and that is the opportunity to do the right thing. People talk all the time, right, about be on the right side of history. Be on the right side of history. Well, I'm standing before you tonight on behalf of the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina, and I'm saying be on the right side of eternity. Do the right thing and cancel this event. And if you cancel this event, our convention will celebrate you, our churches will stand with you, and our God will bless you.
do the right thing. Thank you. Home. The voice is strong as thunder will be heard across the land. Calling to the magistrates to save our neighbor man.